Wonderful child, isn't it? I willed him to stop. Incredible. Now will yourself back to sleep, Mrs. Armstrong. Oh, no. Rules for dutiful naval wives, numbers one and two. First soothe the fractious child. Then get up at impossible hours and cook your husband's breakfast with a pleasant smile. Rules for gallant submarine commanders. Be able to do everything that your men can do, and that includes frying eggs. I'll cook my own. Don't shave that beard off. It scratches. How long have we got? The boat leaves at 7.30. I can never understand why the Navy always insists on doing everything at the crack of dawn. The sea is there all day. It impresses the taxpayers. You know, you're wrong about that beard. I'd look pretty sensational. Don't shout. What was that? Don't make such a noise, you'll wake the sprog again. Oh, sorry, darling. Peter. Hmm? You know that letter I had from Daddy yesterday? Oh, yes, yes, I meant to ask you about that. How's the great big world of commerce? Is he still making millions? He's opening a new factory. Good for him. I always said I'd marry an heiress. He's looking for a man to run it. Nice job for someone. He suggested you might like it. Good heavens, I don't know anything about vacuum cleaners. He said you could pick up all the essentials in six months. I'm sure I could, darling, but just at the moment, I'm perfectly happy where I am. You can't stay in the Navy forever. But it has been known. It's also been known for people to be thrown out when it's too late for them to start anything else. So they have to take up jobs as golf club secretaries and running chicken farms. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I wouldn't mind a chicken farm. Well, I would. I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean it seriously. I think chickens are absolutely idiotic. <laughs> oh, Peter, why are you so obstinate? Surely you've had enough of submarines. All through the war, ever since we were married. Why don't you retire now? You know Daddy wants you to join him. Would it make you very much happier if I did? Of course it would. It's not just a question of the career and money. I want a home, Peter. Something that'll be ours for always. I want us to belong somewhere, instead of always moving around from one place to another. Well, darling, I'm not being impossible, am I? Only I do love you, and I'm so sick of sharing you with a lot of damn submarines. All right, darling. We'll talk about it this afternoon. I should be back by tea time. <laughs> What's so funny? Your face. Just look at it. You're all lopsided. <laughs> Pass the marge, Nobby. Come out of the clouds. Pass the marge. Oh, sorry, mate. I was thinking about something. Oh, you don't want to worry. It'll happen when it's ready, and not before. That's right, Nobby. When we had our third, it was a week late, and none the worse for that. Blimey, you went free. Hmm. Stock young in Ireland, don't they? She always wanted to nip at the old girl, but we left it a bit late, see, and... That's why I'm worried, like. Are you going already, Andy? Yes, I feel like a bit of air. Oh, he's got a hangover, if you ask me. Out of the town he was last night. What? Andy? And you engaged to be married? Huh. Don't know what the younger generation's coming to. As a matter of fact, I went to the Bally in Weymouth. Well, I don't Did you know. you know? I knew a Bally girl once. I think she was. Used to do 100 somersaults without stopping. <laughs> Anyone coming? OK, Andy. I'm not going to sit and listen to them to Blarney. If you hadn't got your hook up, my lad, I'd put you across my knee and smack your Irish bottom. Still wet behind the ears, they are. You haven't got that bird in there, have you? Yeah, she's coming out with us this morning. Ain't hey, it, Clary? You can't take a perishing pigeon down in a submarine. Not going to. Just before we dive, we're going to release her. It's never been done before. What, would she fly all the way back to Birmingham? No, back here where she lives. I don't know what you want a kid for. You got one already. Haven't helped you if the first lieutenant catches you, that's all. Like it? Yes, it's lovely, Rosie. I only got it yesterday. You don't mean you bought it yourself. Oh, that's all you ever talk about, money. Anybody would think you wanted me to go around looking like a servant. Now, Rosie, you know I don't mean that. It's just that we've got to be careful. 
You can't do much on a stoker's pay. All right, all right. There's no need to get upset. As a matter of fact, I didn't pay for it myself. It was a present. Who from? Mr. Randall. Mr. Randall? He's the managing director of Model Modes. I'm one of his best customers, so he gave it to me. Now, look, Rosie, we've had all this out before. You're married to me now. You can't go accept him. Half a minute ago, you were annoyed because you thought I'd paid for it myself. What do you want? Rosie, I only want you to have everything you want, but... Look, I'll have to go now. I'll be late. Don't forget to ask Johnston for some butter. I shan't be seeing Johnston. Thought he was the cook on the Solway. Well, yes, he is, but... Uh, I was transferred last week to the Trojan. Oh, my, they don't have to shift you around, don't they? Third time this year, isn't it? Yes. Oh, George, before you go, what about the housekeeping? But I gave it to you on Friday. Yes, I know, dear, but I had to spend a bit extra over the weekend. With you being home all the time, you eat so much. All right, dear. That's 18 bob. Bye, Rosie. You picking up Harry Manson? No, he's uh, staying in Weymouth somewhere with his lady's girlfriend. I believe this one's really trying to hook him. Well, I hope she's successful. It's high time he got married. I don't think he ever will, you know. Oh, why not? He says he prefers the Navy to nappies. What a sordid way to look at it. Well, I know what he means. Tita. See you at tea time. Four o'clock. Goodbye, darling. Bye-bye. after trying out your snort mask. I can hardly wait. That's just what we wanted, sir. I'm sorry, but they've just got a new set, and the destroyer people are very keen. Rendezvous area, Baker Charlie, 1,300 hours. Thank you. This is about one of your trips. Thank heavens for that. He's been behaving like an expectant father for weeks. I was afraid the strain might be too much for him. Hello, Sir? Tell Abel Seaman Clark I want to see him, will you? Very good, sir. Hey, we'll see him Clark. Here, Chief. Captain wants to see you right away. Blimey, what have I done now? Here. Better give me that blooming bird. <whistles> Thanks, Chief. Morning, Clark. Morning, sir. Feeling all right? Yes, thank you, sir. Read that and you'll feel better. You can have your leave. Better take the liberty boat back to the beach. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, sir, yes. Nobby Clark, a blooming father. Well, who'd have thought it? Carry on now, sir? Certainly. Give your wife and son my best wishes. HM Submarine Churchill, new father. There I was, and there she was, and I couldn't get away. It's no use making excuses, Harry. You promised to take me out last night, and you just didn't turn up. Oh, it wasn't my fault, Marjorie. You know that? The Admiral insisted. I... What's the matter with you this morning? Probably the effect of all my suppressed excitement at the thought of doing an ASDIC exercise with the bullfinch. Nothing wrong with that, is there? But Armstrong's suffering from peacetime fatigue, sir. No, no, he's not. Peter just can't forget he was my number one when I sank a troop transport five years ago. Gave him the idea he's one of the heroes of the submarine service. Never got over it. He was a sitting bird anyway. Well, that reminds me. Have you got anybody to look after your kids tonight? Good Lord, I forgot. It's Monday. We come to you, don't we? That's right. 
James, would you like to be our sitter in tonight? No, thank you, sir. I don't think my nerves are strong enough. But we'll have to rely on the poor old char again. Come on, Peter. Time you got cracking. Right. Bring a bottle with you, old boy. You can afford it. You won enough last week. WT Aerials, okay, now, sir. Right, thanks, Hilbert. Morning, sir. Hey, morning, number one. All reports correct? Good. I admire your taste. What? Oh, I see. You see the navigating. Some attendants are too young for sex. I don't think many midshipmen would agree with you. Engineers haven't got the time. Got your snort mask ready, Chief? Aye. One more damn thing to remember. But it's a beautiful invention, all the same. Do you know, if anybody had told me when I was an apprentice, that they'd be feeding air to the main entrance of the submerged submarine. I'd have said they were crazy. Well, never mind, Chief. We'll be having mechanical men soon. And all you have to do is sit at home and press buttons. Well, as long as they've got mechanical rents, I'm all for that. If you've quite finished arranging your social diary, number one, I should like to take this boat to sea. All right, Mr. Caesar. Morning, sir. Bay telegraphs. Bay telegraphs, sir. Let go, Springs. Let go, Springs. Let go forward. Let go forward. Let go aft. Let go aft. Slow ahead, port. Slow ahead, port, sir. Port motor running ahead, sir. Starboard 10. Starboard 10. Slow ahead, starboard. Slow ahead, starboard, sir. Starboard motor running ahead, sir. All in for leaving harbour. I never thought I'd actually envy anyone going out on a dull exercise. Well, come on, James. Let's have breakfast and start filling in forms. against Portland. Mind you, Vito. It's in the bag. We're in position now, sir. Thanks. Clear the bridge. First lieutenant. Number one here, sir. All set? All set, sir. Use Q. Use Q tank. Aye, aye, sir. I'm sorry, sir. That was Clary, sir. She's over in Beijing. I'm sorry, sir. You blithering idiot, Higgins. This is a submarine, not a blasted Avery. Tell the coxswain you're in the first lieutenant's report. Aye, aye, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. Lunatic.
place where birds are kept. I thought he was being rude. Fuck you. Fuck you, sir. Let me see the diving signal. Number one. 30 feet, sir. 30 feet, sir. Blow cue. Blow cue, sir. How's our position, sir? I'm just trying to get now. It's not lost all correct, sir. Got a good charge. Right, Chief. We'll stop the Aztec exercise at 2 o'clock. Seen this? Report of the Admiral's inspection last week. Engine room department well run and efficient. That's nice of him. Morale of the whole ship's company seemed excellent. Oh, why shouldn't it be? Yes, that's what I was wondering. I don't suppose the old boy's ever served in anything smaller than a battleship, let alone one of these things. He probably thinks we're all slightly mad. Liable to crack under the strain at any moment. But I always feel much better, don't you, sir? More peaceful, isn't it? Echo, sir. Two degrees starboard bow. Range 1,000 yards. Well, check that. I can't see any there. Still hear it, sir. Snipe, ask the captain to come to the control room, will you? Sir. Captain, sir, the first lieutenant would like you to come to the control room. Right. What is it, number one? As he reports an echo, sir. Green two half a mile. Can't see anything there. We had a fix, lady pilot. Yes, sir, just before the coastline disappeared. Let's have a look. Still got it. It's disappeared now, sir. Must have been a false echo. Nothing on the horizon, 50 degrees on either bow. It was very clear, sir. A small object, I'd say, but very clear. Shoal of fish, you think? Must have been. The sun's come out again. Out of port. Shut all watertight doors and ventilation. 60 feet. Out of port. Shut all watertight doors and ventilation. 60 feet. 60, 60 feet, feet, sir. Emergency stop snorting. Emergency stop snorting, sir. Flat Q. Flat Q, sir. There's a mine dead ahead. Five feet, sir. Must have been drifting for years. If the antenna's not active, we'll be all right. Blow cue. Blow cue, sir. What's the captain mean, antenna, sir? It means it's electrically operated. You mean we don't have to hit it for it? No, lad. Don't have to hit it. Q blown. Q Kingston shot, sir. 60 feet, sir. Then Q in board. Then Q in board, sir. Steady on your course now. Steady, sir. Course 128, sir. I had a signal from the bullfinch. 
Trojan overdue in exercise area Baker Charlie. Submarine has not surfaced within visibility distance and cannot be contacted by ASDIC. I'm searching. Well, that settles it, sir. Not necessary. A number of things may have happened. However, we must assume it's something serious. Make sub smash one signal. Aye, sir. Chief Yeoman, emergency unclassified. Addressed CNC Portsmouth, Flag Officer Submarines, Flag Officer Air, Coastal Command, Channel Area, Admiralty. Repeated Air Ministry, all other CNC's Home Command. Sub smash one. Flooded, sir. At least not in his. Oh. Where's the captain? You okay, number one? Oh, I think so. I must have knocked myself out. Darling? Yes, sir. I think the bars are blown off. I'm going to check the engine room. Come on, Chief. Everybody else all right in here? Andrews? Andrews, you all right? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Quite sure, right. sir. Can you get across to the main battery fuse and see if right. we can get the emergency right. lights to work? Aye, aye, aye sir. Hello, Coxon. Kelly? Aye, Coxon. You all right, Higgins? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. If I have to get blown up, trust me to land in there. Thinking so, the mine must have blown off the snot mast and lifted the induction valve. You mean the stone's flooded, sir? We don't know yet. No point in making a mystery out of it, Chief. They've all got to know. The poor bastards. With the snot induction lifted, a thousand gallons of water would get inside in 30 seconds. I don't think they'd have known much about it. Chance in a million. I'm afraid it won't be much good, Chief. I'll try the salvage blow. Nice work, Andrew. Nice, sir. That's the lot, sir. Thank you, Barlow. Tell the captain, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Twelve left out of sixty-five. Only 12 of us. I'm not sure that we're the lucky ones. You check the survivors, number one? Here you are, sir. Andrews, Brush, Higgins, Hillbrook, Kelly, Marks, Snipe, you, Oakley, the Chief, Barlow, and myself. 12 altogether. Yes, Snipe? I, I just wanted to ask what had happened, sir. Can we get up again? Can we escape? Well, for God's sake, tell us, sir. Get back to the control room, Snipe. Yes, sir. Let me know it once he gives any further trouble. Very good, sir. I suppose you've guessed the worst. We'd better go and tell the chaps. No luck with the blow, sir. Everyone here, Coxon? All except Higgins, sir. Able Seaman Higgins? I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to get some eat, sir. We've only got one battery, Higgins, and we want to save it. Oh, see, sir. There's plenty of tin, sir. Good. We may need them. Now, listen, everybody. I'm going to give you the whole position as far as I know it, and then I'm going to tell you what I propose to do about it. The bows are blown off, and the stern is flooded. So the only means of normal escape left to us are through the conning tower and the gun hatch. Do you mean that all the other chaps except us are dead, sir? Yes, I'm afraid so, Kelly. But at least they couldn't have known much about it. No, sir. I see. Thank you, sir. Now, we're on the bottom, depth of about 15 fathoms. The section we're in now is completely watertight, 
So there's nothing to worry about from that point of view. By this time, the flat will have started. And the bullfinch and possibly two or three other destroyers will be searching for us. It can only be a matter of hours before they find us because they already know roughly where we are. When they do, the drill is to drop some small charges to let us know. As soon as we hear them, four men will go up through the gun hatch and ten minutes later, I shall send another four up through the conning tower. That's eight, sir. What about the rest? I was coming to that. Now, you all know we can't use the conning tower or the gun hatch more than once, don't you? So as soon as we're sure the first eight are safe, I and three others will flood this whole section and escape that way. It can be done, and we shall do it. Anybody got any questions? How about the air, sir? Will it last all right? The uh, normal air will last several hours. After that, by using the CO2 absorption unit and making extra oxygen, we can renew it for um, oh, as long as necessary. All right? Any other questions? Right. Now, there's nothing much we can do now except wait. Waiting's not too easy, but I know you'll manage it all right. Move about as little as possible. Take it easy. Sleep if you want to. That should be quite simple, shouldn't it, Higgins? <laughs> oh, no, sir. I'll never sleep in the day, sir. No, of course you don't. We could blow some oil to the surface, sir. Might help them find us a bit quicker. Oil. That's a good idea, Chief. Higgins, you sure you don't want to sleep? What, me, sir? Oh, no, sir. Good. Then you can blow some oil. Certainly, sir. Where from, sir? From the place you usually go to for a quiet smoke. Blimey. You think you're everything, don't you, sir? Conning tire, checking the upper hatch. Mm. You've uh, made an escape before, haven't you? Well, naturally, we all have. No, I don't mean the practice tank. I mean a real one. You did, didn't you? During the war. Yes. Was it? Was it all right? Well, it must have been. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here now. Would he, lad? I mean, it was quite easy, like the tank. Sure. Piece of cake. How deep you, then? About the same as this. I don't do worry, sir. It's the safest crossing the street. Safer if it happens to be Sidney Hall Street. You were in the welkin, then, weren't you? They... Did they all get out? I mean... Look, if you've nothing else to talk about, for God's sake, keep quiet. Seven down. Ned to self-control. Any suggestions? I'm sorry. There, be that if you can. Don't get so excited, man. You'll be breathing more than your fair share of air. I bet you anything you like, I win this game. All right, what's your stakes? My daughter rum tomorrow. I'll take you. Andy, are you in on this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All he would give you is a couple of tickets for the ballet. That's right. There you are. Now, what did I tell you? <laughs> Fat lot of use they are to any of us. Who's the second one for, Andy? My gal. Does she go with the tickets? <laughs> 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 what the hell are you all so pleased about? Come on, Snipe. We'll make room for two more. No, oh, thanks. Come on, lad, take your mind I off. I said no! Then you open up the upper hatch and float to the surface. Just like it is in the practice town. I see. What do you want, Snipe? I want to get out. That's what I want. And so you will, sir. You'll just have to be patient and wait for a wee while. I can't. I can't stand it. I won't wait. Listen, I won't be shut up here any longer. Hold yourself. Come on, sit down. I'll get you something. Miss, it's no good. I can't stay here. I must get out. Well, you can't get out yet. You heard what the captain said. I don't All care right, what he back. said. Where is he? I've got to see him. Well, you can't see him now. Here, come on, drink this. Come on, drink it. Now, what's the matter? Well, sir, it's the feeling of being shut in, sir. I get a sort of feeling that everything... It'd be all right if I can move about, sir, but... Oh, God, you... You can't do nothing, you can't see nothing. You, you don't even know what's going on outside. Listen, Snipe, you've got the wrong angle on all this. You're no more trapped down here than the rest of us. We'll all get away in good time. What do you think would happen if you got away now? You'd find yourself bobbing about the ocean miles away from anyone. 
You'd be a damn sight worse off than you are down here. At least down here you've got someone to talk to. You don't know what it's like in there, sir. They're all talking and laughing as if there was nothing wrong. They don't understand. I can't go back in there. Where's the... What's the trouble, mind? Snipe? Stoker Snipe's reported sick, sir. What's the matter with him? Claustrophobia, I think. I see. How long have you been like this? Well, I feel it a bit sometimes when we die, sir, but... It's never been as bad as this. Ever reported it to anyone? Yes. Why not? Why? I hope that no one would ever have to know, sir. I hope that nothing like this would ever happen. But you knew it was a risk we had to take, didn't you? Sir. A man in your condition's got no right to be in a submarine. Why did you volunteer? I needed the extra pay, sir. You needed the extra pay. Do you know why we're given that money? Because we might have to cope with an emergency like this one. And the first time it happens to you, you decide to risk the lives of your shipmates to save your own miserable skin. It's a pretty rotten kind of a bargain, isn't it? You're useless to me and a menace to everyone else on board. Now, get out. Come to Manny. You better see about the pump. Did you give him that? Why, yes, I wanted to calm him down. What good do you think Bromide's going to do a man in his condition? Well, he looked distraught. I thought it was someone... Sympathy's no good either. The only way to deal with claustrophobia is to try and jerk the chap into a sense of his own responsibilities. Not start performing like a wet nurse. If there are any more cases of this kind, I'll deal with them myself. Very good, sir. You think I was too tough with him, don't you? Well, he did the trick, sir. Of course he did the trick. Good God, you don't think I enjoy shouting at the chaps to you, Sniper, or anybody else. It was the only thing to do. I see that now, sir. And stop crawling. Well, it's a great attitude for a first lieutenant on receiving a well-deserved rocket from his commanding officer, sir. I'm glad you think it was well-deserved anyway. That's something. I'm sorry. He took me by surprise. I'm afraid we shall have more trouble with him later, though. You think so? Mm-hmm. Remember your Latin? Naturum expellas furia, tama nusque recurrit. Rough translation, you can drive out nature by force, but you'll always return. And kick you in the backside. Oh, it's simple enough if the individual trusts you. You've got nothing to worry about with the troops. I'm glad you think so. I'm sure of it. I wonder why. Because I've got half a strike more than anybody else. Oh, much simpler than that. Because they got faith in you. You said that almost as if you resented it. Did I? Well, maybe I do. Because I haven't got very much of myself. Is that why you've never tried to get a command? I put you up for one in my last report. You know that, don't you? Thanks, sir. Well, I know. But it won't make any difference. I don't get it. I thought you wanted a boat of your own. I used to. More than anything in the world. Until I escaped from the Wilkin. Oh, you know what happened. Mike stayed there and I got away with it. On his orders. I went to see his wife afterwards. Told her the usual stupid, ridiculous clichés and all the time she must have been thinking, he's dead and you're alive. On his orders. You were obeying them, weren't you? Exactly. Oh, I'm fine at carrying out orders. I just wouldn't like to have to decide what orders to give. That's all. Yeah? Nice glass of lime juice, sir. Thanks, Higgins. Lime juice. I'm sorry there's no ice, sir. The fridge ain't working. Finished blowing the oil yet? Oh, yes, a coxswain says there's enough up there now for the old battle fleet to spot it. Good. I, uh, I'll see you get some sort of recognition for this, Higgins. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Yes, I'll forget all about the pigeon. A very nice of you, sir, I'm sure. Have a sandwich. Oh, thanks. Did uh, Helen make them? Yes. Well, they should find us pretty soon. Hmm. But decide who's going up first. I'll send three ratings, and I shall want one officer. Oakley or McPhee? Think so? Well, Oakley's the obvious choice. He's the youngest. There isn't much he can do down here, but he'll be able to give a full report when he's picked up. All right, I agree. I'll send a written report with all of them, of course, but um, in case anything does happen to him, 
I'll let Andrews go as well. Mm, he's bright enough to get in the position. Uh-huh. That needs two more, doesn't it? I want to keep the engine room chaps as long as possible, in case of any sudden repairs. And the coxswain better stay too. Hmm. No Higgins, so we can eat. That leaves um, Bruff, Philbrook and Kelly. Well, I don't want to send three leading seamen, so I'll make it Bruff and Kelly, OK? Not Snipe? No. No, he's a stoker for one thing, and anyway, I'd like to give him a bit more time to calm down. All right. Go until this four to get ready. Coxon, the first photograph will be the subaltern's brother. Bullfinch has searched the whole of this area, sir. Yes. The frozen must have sunk before she reached it. Yes. It's ten past four, sir. I know that, Gates. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not very good at just waiting about. I know that, too. Look, sir, couldn't I go out with the salvage ship? I'd be much more use there than here. Yes, I've no doubt you would. So would James or any of the others. Point is, you're pretty important here, too. But James could take over my job for a day or two, sir. He knows all about it. Perhaps. Tell the Chief Yeoman to come here, will you? Very good, sir. Put me through to C&C, Chief of Staff, please. Matthews, tell the Chief Yeoman to report to the Captain. Aye, sir. Trojan servicing signal is now two hours overdue. Yes. I'll go ahead and make the signal. Right. We'll give the Chief Yeoman sub smash two signal. Yes, sir. Chief Yeoman, make sub smash two. Submarine Trojan, two hours overdue. Aye, aye, sir. The salvage ship will get underway at once, sir. All right, Gates. You can go. Make a good job. Thank you, sir. I'll ask for a boat right away. Echo bearing 350, sir. Appears to be stationary. Have you got any wreck there on your chart, pilot? No wreck in that position, sir. I think it may be the Trojan number one. Starboard 15. Starboard 15, sir. 100 revolutions. 100 revolutions, sir. Extended target, 6 degrees. Extended target, 6 degrees. Shall I tell him to switch on the loudspeaker, sir? Please. Loudspeaker, please. Aye, aye, sir. You look lovely. I'll start for a swim. You and me, Andy. What's the use of my winning these blooming ballet tickets if you're going to be there to cut me out? <laughs> Here you are. All set, my lucky lads. Hey, uh, Coxon. One little whiff of oxygen and back you go to civilization and watered beer. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey, I reckon we're better off down here. All ready, sir. Thank you, Butter. Now, you all know exactly what to do. Breathe quite naturally while going up. Don't try and hold your breath. And when you get to the top, just lie back for a minute or two. And you remember your surfacing drill. Don't start swimming straight away. Now, in each of these is a detailed report of exactly what's happened. Give them the first officer you will see on being picked up. Turn my waist. Any questions? Yes, sir. Do we get survivor's leave afterwards? Oh, yes, always, if you get wet. <laughs> All set? Yes, I think so, sir. Nervous? A bit. I don't blame you. There's no need to be. Once you're inside there, there's nothing more to worry about. You'll enjoy it. I expect so, sir. Don't forget the others are probably feeling much worse than you are. You'll have to look after them. That won't give you much time for worrying about yourself, will it? No. No, of course not, sir. <laughs> Listen. You know why you're being sent up, don't you? She knows you's down here. Now, me, what with serving food and blowing oil, I'll probably be in on Christmas. Quiet, everybody. There's a ship somewhere above us. Oh, God, they found us. Wait a minute. They haven't dropped any charges yet. Lovely. Let's <laughs> boost up a bit. Let's do it. All right, all right, all right. First four to escape, muster onto the gun hatch. All right, look sharp now. Go first, bro. Put your face piece on as soon as you're inside the chamber. Good luck. Thank you, sir. 
Andrews. Good luck. Thanks, sir. Good luck, Kelly. Good luck to you, too, sir. All right. Start breathing on your sets. Don't forget your exhaust valves. Don't open the upper hatch till the water's up to your neck. I'm relying on you to make a good job of this. I know you will. Good luck, Sub. Good luck, Larry. Good luck, Sub. Thanks, everyone. See you all soon. Might you score a century against Portland? All set? Shut the hatch. Takes about two minutes to flood out, doesn't it, Chief? Yes, sir. Sniping. No good gazing at it. We can't use that hatch again. Well, that's that. Now, we've got to decide who the next four will be. That's pretty obvious, isn't it, sir? Why? Well, there are eight of us down here. Four of us are bachelors and four married. The chief, Barlow, Snipe and yourself. Obviously, you're the ones to go. Oh, I'm not in agreement with you at all, number one. Why should I or any of the others have preference in an emergency? Now, listen, Chief, We're all I... volunteers. Nobody ever told me anything about bachelors giving way to married men. Don't be stupid, Chief. Well, don't be so heroic. I'm not. I'm just trying to save as much suffering as possible if something should go wrong. Oh, come, number one. You, you underestimate yourself. If anything happened to you, I'm sure a large number of young women would be most upset. Oh, with the love of Mike. The Chief's right, Harry. All right, you're the one who makes decisions here. Go ahead, make this one. This one's a bit tougher than you think. What do you mean? There are only four escape sets left in the locker in the control room. I know that, but there are six more than one over there. Go and have a look at it. Sir? 
It's no good. They're all ripped to pieces. When did you know about this? Just before they located us up top. I put it in the reports that Oakley and the others took with them. It isn't so easy, is it? The next four to go up will be the last. The rest will have to stay down here and uh, hope they'll be able to salvage us. Flooding the whole compartment would be absolutely impossible without escape sets. Aye, it's a nasty position, all right. You're going to tell the men, sir? Yes. Yeah. You won't tell them now, before the next lot go up. I think it's fairer if everybody knows exactly how we stand. But if you tell them now, they'll know that whoever's not ordered to escape will... not order anybody to stay or anybody to go. I don't understand. No good talking about it, mate. We'll know who goes next just as soon as the skipper tells us and not before. Come to that, it don't make much difference. The last four just flood up this compartment and away they go, just as easy as it was through the gun hatch. They'll get wetter sooner. That's all. Well, I don't mind admitting, I hope I go up through the conning tower. I couldn't bear watching old Iggy's face with the water coming up all around it. What's wrong with my face? Nothing. Only it's here. Well, if we must decide on somebody, I think Higgins ought to go. That's nice of you, Coxon. Why me? Oh, you're our little hero, aren't you? It was you that blew out the oil. If it wasn't for you, Higgy lad, we might be sitting here until kingdom come. Why, Higgins? Anyone but me. If I don't go, I only hope you do, Snop. You're getting on my nerves. Sitting there like a blooming death's head. Only not so cheerful. You hate my guts, don't you? Nobody hates you. Oh, yes, they do. You do, and so does Marx. You didn't stay long in your last boat, did you, Snipe? Solway, wasn't it? What do you mean? Only that I'm beginning to realize why they got rid of you. But I don't blame them. All right, I don't know what you're thinking. You all hate me in submarines, don't you? I'm a general on bad luck. That's what you mean, isn't it? Snipe. Oh, damn you, idiot. You want the officers to hear us? You get us all into trouble. What's all the noise about? Well, nothing, sir. Just a friendly argument. All right, we'll pack it in now. The captain wants everybody in the wardroom. Very good, sir. Now get forward and keep quiet. Understand? I never did hold with gambling, sir. There are times when it's the only answer, Chief, and I'm afraid this is one of them. I've asked you to come in here because I've got something rather serious to say which affects us all. You know there are eight DSEA sets in the locker in the control room and another six in here. I'm afraid the ones in here are quite useless. The locker was completely smashed when the mine exploded. You mean there are only four left, sir? The ones in the control room? That's it, Barlow. I see, sir. So we use those for the four who go out through the conning tower? Is that right, sir? That's all we can do. What happens to the rest, sir, then? Four that are left. They'll have to stay here and wait till the boat is salvaged. That might... Well, that might take some time, mightn't it, sir? Yes, it probably will. Depends how soon they can start, how much they can lift us with each tide, and uh, weather conditions. But I expect they'll run an air pipe down to us, and we've got a good supply of oxygen. We can stay here a week, if necessary. Providing there's enough food for us, Higgins. I think we'll be all right, sir. Good. That means they've picked up Oakley and the others. Now, I'm not going to give any orders about this. And I'm not going to ask for volunteers. I want everybody to have an equal chance. I'm going to deal each man one card face downwards. I want you to turn them over yourselves, one after another. The four with the highest cards will go up through the conning tower. That clear to everybody? Ace is high or low, sir? Ace is high. Right. Who'd like to shuffle them? Go on, Higgins. Blimey, what a school. All right, move in, boys, around the table. Yourself, sir. I'm not in the drawer. Well, what? Could. That wasn't part of the bargain. No more am I, sir. You're first, Higgins. Turn up your card. Now look here, sir. Turn up your card.
Never had no luck playing straight. Barlow? Well, that looks like a good one, Coxon. You're next, Snipe. Blimey, another winner. Number one. Lucky in love. The rip. Well done, Sparks. Chief? Beginner's lucky. So far it's Hillbrook, the Chief, Barlow, Snipe. You've got a knave to beat, Marks. Well, who'd have believed that? Blimey, suppose you beat your gallery. For God's sake, shut up. Hillbrook, Barlow, the Chief win. Marks and Snipe tie for last place. I'll deal you each another card to decide. Come on, one of you. Oh, I'd love Moxie. That doesn't look too good. How about your card, Snipe? That's pretty tough. That's the bloody card. Why should you go, not me? You're all in it. You're all against me. Snipe. Who are you to decide my life for me? Why should I stay here and die just because you say so? You cut up, Snipe. Stay here, huh? You can all stay out here. I'm getting out. I'm going out. Let me go, damn you. Let me go. Now listen, Snipe. I'm not going to stay. I'm not going to die. Oh. Hello, oh, Higgins. Uh, Put Snipe on one of the bunks in the wardroom. Uh, sir. Yes, sir. Marks. Yes, sir. In view of what's happened, I'm going to ask you to stand down in favor of Snipe for the next escape. It's the safety of everybody. I'm not ordering you to do it. I'm asking if you will. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Thank you, Marks. Number one. Sir. You see everything's ready. Right, sir. You know, Coxon, have some sardines before you go. Oh, thanks, Higgy. If you get lost, they'll find the way for you. <laughs> How about you, sir? Ah, don't mind if I do. Thanks. Good idea, Higgy. Best food I've tasted in the Trojan. Probably because you didn't cook it, Iggy. There's gratitude for you. Oh, sorry, Moxie. Thanks, Iggy. There we are, that's the lot. All decisions made, all passion spent. You know, it's funny. The Chief doesn't hold with gambling, and I love it. Yet he goes and I stay. <laughs> Must be a moral in it somewhere. I'm sorry, Harry. You needn't be. I'm not. Not this time. I'll give this to the chief. Come on, get this on, Snipe. What's wrong with you? Already? All except Snipe, sir. Come on, Snipe, you're cracking. You're holding up the others. It's no good, so I can't go. What are you talking about? Why not? Well, it's my arm, sir. I... I heard it when I fell. What's the matter with it? Let's have a look, Snipe. It's my wrist. I... I couldn't climb the ladder. Couldn't work my set anyway. What's all this about, Snipe? Well, I think I'll bust my wrist, sir. It hurts. That's bad, sir. Let me see it. All right, Marks. You'll be going after all. But look, sir. 
Hurry up now. Can't afford to waste any more time. Higgins. Sir? Take Snipe in the wardroom and bandage that wrist. Aye, sir. Good luck, Marksy. Good luck, Chief. Good luck, Sparks. Good to see you, chums. Already? Aye, already, sir. Up you go, Coxon. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Same to you, sir. Ciao, Bob. You next, Hillbrook. All right, let's get on with it. Cheerio, sir. Cheerio. Good luck. Ciao, Hillbrook. Take it easy. Marks. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Up you go. Ciao, Marks. Write that letter, sir, the private one, shall I? Keep it. Anyway, till you hear something definite. And, Chief, tell him up top that everyone down here is quite okay and the morale's good. Everyone. You understand? Aye, aye, sir. Oh. Well, chair, Chief. Give my love to the Admiral. I'll do that. Well, au revoir, sir, as the French say. Au revoir, Chief. Start breathing on your sets. Luck, boys. Hear that? They're in the calling town now. Funny how things always work out right in the end, isn't it? And some people say there ain't no justice. minutes or so, they'll be breathing gorgeous fresh air. Just think of that, Snipe. Thanks, Vicky. I don't want to start using oxygen till tomorrow. Now there are only four of us, this air should last us some time. What's the matter? What? Feeling groggy? Oh, yes, I am, as a matter of fact. I had malaria a couple of years ago. It creeps up on you now and then. You'd better go into the wardroom. Take it easy for a bit. Yes. Yes, I'll go and lie down. Give me an answer. Right, in the wardroom. He caught him with his bad arm, sir. He couldn't have heard it at all, Stop sir. jabbering. Shift the table. Get some brandy, Higgins. Oh, Hurry sorry. up. Thanks, Snipe. Get a blanket, will you? Yeah. Bandy, sir. Come on, boy. Have a sip of this. <coughs> Feeling better? Thanks. <laughs> Sorry to do that. Hit me suddenly. The deck would have hit you suddenly if Snipe hadn't caught you. Thank you, Snipe. How's the wrist, Snipe? All right, sir. Here he is. Sir. Here you've got the bottle out. I think we'll all have a glass. What, me and Snipe too, sir? Yes, unless you prefer evaporated milk. Well, not milk, sir, but if I really am going to have a drink in the wardroom, sir, I'd like a drop of port, sir. With your best, of course, sir. <coughs> Permission granted. Help yourself. I'll deal with the brandy. Thanks, sir. Cool, look at me. Helping myself to a glass of port in one of His Majesty's men of war. Able seaman he is. Just like I had, Maru. Blimey. Better make the most of this one, chaps. We may be here some time. After this, the pub's closed. Well, bottom's up. Relax. That is 
therefore no one was there. But I and the three others should remain in the submarine until salvage is either achieved or abandoned. We must get them up, Mac. We must. Aye, sir. Stop there. We're anchoring presently. They'll get divers down at once. Is the CO2 unit intact? It's yes, sir. down both engines. We'll run an air pipe down to them anyway. Yes, Lifting craft are being towed out now. They should be in position in about four hours. Take another 12 to get the wires under and start lifting once it's in. Yes. About 90 feet. And with these tides, we ought to be able to raise them about 15 feet each day. It'll take the best part of a week, Mac. Stop it. It's a long time, sir. What about the others? Do you think they'll be able to stand it? Well, sir. Yes? Captain gave me a special message about that, sir. He asked me to tell you that everyone is quite okay. Morale is good. That's fine. Stand by, star, with Agbar. Well, here we are, mate. Goodbye for now, and don't worry. We'll get them up. Hope so, sir. Boats alongside, sir. Stand by, for us. Switch on the oxygen. Okay, she's on now, sir. That should freshen up the atmosphere a bit. Well, there's that muck. Luncheon for you and the first lieutenant, sir. What are you having? The same, sir. I thought it best to finish off each dinner as we come to it, seeing as we ain't got no fridge. All right, we'll take those along, then come back and bring yours and Snipes to the wardroom as well. What do you mean for us to eat, Aunt Dennis, in there, sir? I don't know what else you propose to do with them, though I could make several suggestions. Drinking in the wardroom? Eating in the wardroom? Blimey, it's almost worthwhile getting sunk. Stop saying blimey. Aye, aye, sir. We'll all live in the wardroom from now on. There are four bunks in there, and I think we ought to make ourselves as comfortable as possible. Thank you very much, sir. What on earth's the matter with you, Higgins? Nothing, sir. Snipe was about to commit a social error. I do it myself every day of the week. Because up to now, Higgins has always forgotten to provide us with an extra knife for the butter. Thank you for remembering today, Higgins. Well, that's all right, sir. We always has them up forehead. Blimey, the coxswain's a real stickler for that sort of thing. <clears throat> you recall that there pigeon yesterday, sir? Do you know it belongs to, sir? Old Nobby Clark. He was going to let it off himself, and then when he had to go home, he asked me to do it for him. It's just a sort of damn silly idea Clark would have. I'm glad he's had a son. Cool, I just thought of something. If old Nobby hadn't been sent home, he'd have come out with us. And then he might never have... Blimey, what a thought. Higgins, that's the fifth time you've said blimey since we started eating. If you can't speak without saying it, for God's sake, keep quiet. Sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, go on, say what you're thinking. Nothing to say, except there doesn't seem to be much point in declaring open house in the wardroom if you're going to swear at the chaps every time they speak. I know, I'm sorry. I, I just feel thoroughly gritty. Reaction, I suppose. I'll apologize to old Higgins. Peter. Mm hmm? Do you want to get out of this jam? Of course I do, don't you? I don't know. Oh, don't be damn silly. Full house in three. One must have a reason for existence, otherwise there's no point. Some kind of basis, a plan for the future. Like you, for instance. You mean because I'm married to Helen and we've got a child? That and your career. One day when I'm an old man, popping up some bar, I remember I played poker dice with Admiral Sir Peter Armstrong at a depth of 90 feet. No one will believe me, it'll be good for my morale. Four tens. I'm not going to be an admiral. I shan't even get a brass hat. Ah, of course you will. 
Sometimes I wonder which you love more, Helen or the sea. Well, to tell you the honest truth, I wasn't quite sure myself. But I'm sure now. I'm getting out of the service. Helen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she's right, of course. She wants a home somewhere permanent, where she can grow roots, family roots. A house in the country with a garden and the flowers staying young while you grow old, hmm? And a rich father-in-law to pay for it all. Why not? I've had 12 years at sea. I enjoyed it. Perhaps he'll give you a little model yacht to play with as well. Hmm. He might even do that. Full house in one. It's funny. If I could get married and settle down, I'd be able to go on in the service. A woman devoted to Harry Manson might inspire a certain confidence. <laughs> what do you mean? There are hundreds of them already. Ugh, I'd never say the course. She'd have to be a very special kind of person with cast iron feelings to prevent bruising and the understanding of a saint. You'll get your confidence back. You don't need a wife to give you that. I need something. I can't do it on my own. Anyhow, what are we discussing women for? We aren't likely to meet any down here unless they've started using wrens as divers. <laughs> Throw away your shot, Rev. Right, They've been down nearly 24 hours now. How long is this going to take? Well, you can't run an air pipe down just like that, you know. You've got to rig everything first. But we're nearly ready now. Got your boat gun? Coming, sir. All set? Yes, sir. Right. When you get down, fire your two boats into the hull and fix rear pipe and exhaust. Got that? Yes, sir. Let them know what you're going to do first. Yes, of course. And fire your boats fairly high up on the starboard side, just after the periscope. There's nothing much in the way there. Very good, sir. Right. Off you go. Shot through for the bomb, sir. Fire off. Aye, sir. Let them know we'll get the wires under as soon as possible and start lifting about 12 hours after that. I'd give to be in the old red line now, soaking up a pint of wallop. And watching that there bit of goods behind the bar, giving us the old cummy there. You know it, don't you? No, I've never been there. What? Call yourself a Matlow and you've never been in the red line? What you do with yourself when you're ashore? I'm married. Well, strike me. I wouldn't have said you was a married sort. How long has this been going on? Three years. Congratulations. Happy? Yes, I'm happy. You ought to bring your missus to the red line. Wouldn't do that barmaid any harm to have a bit of competition now and again. I bet she's lovely, eh? She's beautiful. Good girl, you bring her in. She doesn't like pubs. What, don't she drink? Well, no, it's not that, but... Uh, well, we usually go to a hotel or a restaurant. Blimey, that's a bit classy, Andy. Yeah, I suppose it is. I like to give her the best I can. She goes out dancing most nights. What, with you? No, not with me. Sorry, mate. Shouldn't have been so nosy. Got no sense. That's the worst of being a bachelor. Never mind, mate. When we get out of this, you're coming out in a real do at the expense of Abel Seaman Higgins. I look forward to that. Thanks, Higgy. Listen, what's that? Blow me, it's a diver! I'll tell the skipper. My God, mate, are we glad to meet you. Captain, it's a diver! He's tapping on the house, sir. Wonderful. Give me a spanner. Come on, he is. Firing. Cartridge. Here comes the air pipe, chaps. Nice to have a drop of fresh air, won't it? Wonder what they'll think of next. Here she comes.
See here, eh? Better than all the dates at the end. Quiet. Passing. Wires. They're going to lift us, chaps. Looks as if you'll get a decent breakfast next Sunday after all, Higgins. Funny how good news makes you interested in grub again. Well, nothing much we can do now except sit and wait. Come on, Higgins, back to the wardroom. Me and Snark was playing cards, sir. Can we do that in there? Blimey, why not? What is it, sir? Hmm? I was wondering what you were thinking about. <laughs> I was thinking about that diver. You mean that he's out there and we're in here? Yes, you could shake hands with him if it weren't for the hull. Mm. I was thinking the same thing myself. All right, sir. Yes, yes, I'm all right. Better in a minute. I'll give you a hand. Lifting wires in position now. Stop heaving. Close your stop up. Seems a slow business, you I expect. How soon do you think you'll be able to start the lift? Well, of course, we've got the weather and the tides to reckon with on this job. But if we can pin her down now, we should be cracking on tonight's tide. They'll have been down there two days by then. You didn't get any sleep last night, did you? Why not turn in for a bit? Do you good? No, thanks, I'm fine. Obstinate fellows, you submariners, aren't you? Well, I suppose it takes all sorts to make a navy. But I've never understood your lot. What makes you do it? I suppose you can put it down to that extra half crown a day. Hey, Kathy, Jack, get a hand over here. Those wires. Take it easy, old boy. Better in a minute, sir. How the hell do you know? I know how you feel. Yes, I think you do. Red six on the black seven, Snipe. Thanks, sir. I wasn't concentrating. You're doing all right. Listen to this, Snipey. Born under the sign of Pi... Peesh. Pisces means fish. <laughs> oh, very appropriate. Thanks, sir. Well, anyhow, that's me. The coming week will provide excellent opportunities for making new friends. Blonde, what a hope. What's the matter with that, Higgins? Well, how can I make new friends stuck down here in this sardine can, sir? I asked you. You have, anyway. Hundreds of blasted divers. Listen to him. This year bloke couldn't have seen them in the stars, could he, sir? Funny. Seems ages since I've seen the stars. I suppose they're all out up there now. Ever been up to the Arctic Circle, Snipe? No, sir, I haven't. You get the stars up there for 24 hours a day in the winter. In the summer, you can see the midnight sun. I tried to photograph it once, but it didn't come out. What, the sun, sir? No, the photograph, Higgins. I will see, sir. Higgins, you have a trigger mind. I'd like to see that someday, sir. You will. You're bound to get up there sooner or later. Have you seen the Northern Lights as well, sir? Yes. Oh, I've seen them. Just like Guy Fawkes Night. I've always been interested in the stars. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. 
What does he mean, a tall ship, sir? A sailing ship with tall masts carrying a lot of sail. One of that boat would have described a submarine. All I ask is a small ship and a cook who knows how to fry. Good, sir. Did you feel that? They've started the lift, chaps. We're going up. Snipe! Snipe! Oh, you shouldn't have done that, sir. You shouldn't have done that. Can I slack off on the mooring, sir? Yes, watch your breast wires as the tide rises. Harry! Take the boat to LC-11. Craft is steady now, sir. Right, he's off your forward mooring. Aye, aye, sir. Is she off the bottom? Yes, we've got to wait now. Stand by to swap your forward moorings and bring her after moorings to the cat. Aye, oh, sir. Yes, she's off. Let's hope the weather holds. Four days now. Only another two, according to the last report. Then you'll be a hero and everybody will be standing your drinks, Higgins. I suppose we'll be all over the front page by now, sir, won't we? Your photo will look lovely on the front of the mirror, Iggy. Names and everything, eh? Cool, cool makes you smile, doesn't it? Here we are all alone and cut off from everyone. And they're all reading about us. Hope somebody saves a copy for me. I expect they'll have one framed and hung up in the Red Lion. What do you know about the Red Lion, sir? I often go in there for a pint. Why? Well, I never. We ain't safe anywhere, are we, Snipey? If I'd seen you in there, sir, I'd have bought you a drink. Thanks very much, Higgins. But the first one after we get ashore is going to be on me. Cool, we won't all have a party. What with you and me and Snipey and Lieutenant Manson when he's well enough, and that barmaid and your missus, I mean... She'd love it, Higgins. And that paper up on the wall, like you said, sir. <laughs> My old dad always prophesied I'd get me name in print. Eight o'clock in the morning outside Bentonville, he used to say. What is it, sir, your aid? Half a minute, sir. I'll get you something for it. Proper doctor, old snob, he's turned out to be, hasn't he, sir? You'd think they was brothers or something, the way he looks after him. They are, in a sense. How do you mean, sir? Well, to understand suffering, you you need to have suffered yourself. Something like that, anyway. Is that why you let Snipey look after Lieutenant Manson all this time, sir? Could be. You don't miss much, do you, sir? Thanks, John. Uh, it's all right, sir. It's all right, sir. Don't uh, worry. Uh, We're going up again, sir. Uh, uh, We're going up again. Uh. H. Uh, S. Hope complete lift. Ten hours. Ten hours. I can't hardly believe it. Let's go and tell the others. Number one still asleep? Yes. We got some good news, Snipe. They hope to complete the job in ten hours. That's good. What do you think of that, Snarpy? Run ashore tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Want to go on with the game? Right. You worried about him? Yeah, he's not too good. He'll be in a proper hospital tomorrow. Now, let's see here. How much do you owe me? Uh, £1,874, John six. Right. Your deal. See, you don't believe it either, do you? 
Don't believe what? You know I could never pay you that much. Not even if I ever had the chance. Yes, you could. Take you about ten years. Of course, you'd have to become a Stoker P.O., but you could do it. Yes, sir, I suppose I could. On the other hand, it uh, might be a damn sight cheaper to try and win it back now. Not that I approve of gambling in the wardroom, though. Yes, sir. I'll have a go anyway. You know, sir, I, I think I will have a try and go through for Stoker P.O., sir. Mr. McPhee says I've got quite a good chance. I'm sure you have. I'm not worrying about going through for PR or anything else. All I want is a pint of wallop and a lot of fresh air. Ten hours, eh? Smell anything? Only them pilchers we had for dinner, sir. It's chlorine gas. Coming from the battery below this deck. Higgins, take the control. Oh, you sir. in here, Snipe. Right, sir. Step on it. If we can't seal off the leak, we've had it. Higgins, bring a spanner. Express. Shift number one further away. Right. Give me a hand, it's buckled. You better lie down, rest for a bit, Snipe. All right, sir. boy. He didn't feel nothing. I wasn't with him. He was alone. Decisions made, all passion spent. There's nothing more you can do for him now. We'll be out of this in a few hours. Take it easy. I know what I'm doing. They've been down there now for almost a week. They can't hang on much longer, even with the airplane. Do you think I don't know that? These wires will only stand a certain strain. We've got to slacken off.
We noticed anything, sir. What do you mean? The quiet. They stopped lifting us. Yes, that's right. Was that, sir? Oh, spot of bad weather, I expect. Let's start again soon. Won't make any difference, sir, will it? In the end, I mean. No, of course not. Sea's getting up a bit. Hmm, oh, we're bound to feel the motion a bit more now, you know, we're nearer the surface. Old Snarpy's taking it badly, isn't he, sir? Yes, he'll be all right soon. Best to leave him alone for a bit. He turned out to be a real good one, hasn't he? he certainly has. <laughs> Funny, isn't he? If all this hadn't have happened, we'd never have known what Snipe was really like. We'd never really have got to know each other. What'll happen to us when we get up soon? It was a large hot drink and a hot bath, I hope. Well, I meant after that, sir. When we go to new jobs. Why? Well, just thinking, sir. You and me and Snipey, it'd be a bit of all right if it was all to go to a new boat together. Hey, Snipey? Yeah, I'd like us all to stay together. There's nothing I'd like more, Higgins, but... Well, I may not stay in the Navy. You, sir? Not stay in the Navy? You'll never leave the sea? No, perhaps you're right. So I saw your wife once, sir, when she came on board at Portland. She's beautiful. I, I should think you'd want to be with her all the time. I feel a bit the same myself sometimes. My wife's lovely too, you know. I remember the day we got married up in London, where she lived. I couldn't take my eyes off her in the church. I kept thinking, she belongs to me, she's mine. And I've gone on believing that. Always. Steady boy, Shank, worth it. And that's what they all say, but they're wrong, all of them. I know what you mean, Snipe. I've never talked to anyone else like this. Don't know why I am now. I suppose it's... Well, I suppose it's because I've never had any... Well, your friends before would understand. Blimey. Friends, that's it. That's it, Snarpy. That's what my horoscope said, remember? You will make new friends. I'll see what he meant now. That's it, Higgins. That's what he meant. What do you mean? If we try to hold on in this weather, the wires will almost certainly capsize the lifting craft. But we've got to take that chance. In face of this, I don't do it. I've got my own men to think of now. It's too much of a risk. I've decided to return to harbour. Do you mean you're going to leave them there? I'm sorry, Gates. Believe me. Mr. Gale, it'll blow itself out. You always told us the truth before, sir. We can take it, can't we, Snipey? All right. It does look pretty bad. Looks like I won't get me thousand smackers after all. I'd like to die to a rich man. What about a game now? All right, sir. Come on, Higgins. You've got plenty to lose. I don't know, sir. It's cut for deal. Blimey, two kings and an ace. We seem to be lucky at the wrong blinking time.
Half a crown a day extra they get for doing that job. I can't understand why they volunteer. You're wrong in that, Murphy. Those men in the Trojan won't die because they happen to be in a submarine. They'll die because of a combination of two things which might happen to anyone at sea. Bad luck and bad weather. But bad luck alone wouldn't have been enough. Skipper of Trojan was his friend. Poor devil. You still got that calendar of yours, Higgins? Yes, sir. What day is it? The Sunday, sir. Six o'clock Sunday morning. So just about be getting up for early service in the depot ship. What'll it be like, sir? It's not that I'm frightened, sir. It's just that I'd like to know. Sort of end, end of everything, I suppose. Maybe a beginning. Don't you, chaps, think it might be rather a good idea if we Trying to join those fellows in the depot ship? That don't seem right, sir. Why not, Higgins? Well, I never paid much heed to that sort of thing before, sir. It doesn't seem right somehow to go asking someone for help just because you're up against it. I'm quite sure that he wouldn't look at it like that. Sure is it, please, sir. O eternal Lord God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, who hast compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end, be pleased to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the persons of us thy servants and the fleet in which we serve. Preserve us from the dangers of the sea and from the violence of the enemy, that we may be a safeguard unto our most gracious sovereign lord, King George, and his dominions, and a security for such as pass on the seas upon their lawful occasions, that the inhabitants of our island may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, 